Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In a previous video, I mentioned one of the great things about On One Photo Raw 2018 is that you don't have to import your images into it. You could just use the Browse module and navigate to wherever the images are on your computer and process them right from there. But if you do need to get images off a memory card or off a mobile phone, you could use the Import function and import them into On One from those memory devices. Now, either way, you're going to have images on your computer, and you probably want to cull and organize them. So in this video, we're going to talk about that. But uh, first, a few words about organize. Um, for years, I've organized my images in a specific way. And there really is no right or wrong way how you organize your photos. You really have to do it whatever way works for you. So feel free to come up with your own method. But what I've come to find out after careful consideration is the way I've been organizing images probably isn't the best way, at least for me. The reason being is after many years of doing it this way, I have probably 60,000 images or something like that in the library that I'm currently using with Lightroom. And when someone calls me and they need a specific image, I found it very easy to, or found it very difficult to find that image. And to give you an idea, let me open up my Lightroom library. And as you can see, I have them divided up by either location or maybe subject. So I have like Bennett Beach, which is a location, Barcelona Harbor is a location, stuff like that. And then I have some um, subjects too, like I have birds in flight and stuff, you know, things like that. So I have them divided up initially into these folders. Then after that, if you click, I have them divided up by date. And what I found is that's very difficult to find an image um, when you have years and years worth of images all divided up into individual folders by date. Someone might call me and say, I want to purchase a polar bear fo uh, photo, and I saw you had one on your Instagram, and I look at my Instagram, and it's from two years ago. So I have to figure out where it was when I took it and try to find that image. So it's difficult that way. The way a lot of other photographers are doing it nowadays, which might be better, is they do still divide it up by either location. In this case, you could see I have Buffalo Zoo here. But what they'll often do is they don't have too many subfolders after that necessarily. They'll initially rename the images by something that will give them an idea when it was taken and where it was taken. So if you look at this Buffalo Zoo folder, you could see that I have images named Buffalo Zoo. Then it has the date, 2017, January 11th. That's when it was taken. Then it has a number, image one, image two, and so on. So it gets renamed uh, by location and date. So that helps you search for the image and we'll cover searching um, in, a, in, a, in depth in a future video. But it helps you find the image much easier if you need to find it by location or date. But then beyond all that is there's other methods they do than to further organize their images. So we'll kind of get into all that right now. But once you get the images on your computer, no matter how you organize them, you probably want to cull them. You want to get, go through them and either get rid of the ones you really don't like by deleting them, or maybe a positive method, which is the way I do it, is you may just ignore the ones that stink, and you just want to uh, mark the ones that you want to process, the ones that are keepers. So either way, it doesn't matter, again, which way you use the negative method or the positive method. They both work. Most people probably use the negative method. So what they'll do is they'll go their, through their images one by one, and they'll mark them in some way that they want to delete them, usually. So they want to get rid of them. Then they might mark some others that they want to process right away. 
Now, there's a number of different ways you could do that with On One Photo Raw 2018. The most common method is you give it a flag, either a heart flag, meaning you like it, or an X flag, meaning you want to get rid of it. You don't like that image. Now, that's very easy to do, and I'll show you how to do it. But keep in mind that if you use a flag, the heart flag or that X flag, those will only be recognized by On One Photo Raw 2018. If you use another method, the star method or the color flag method, those, me those flags or types of methods will be recognized by other programs beside on one, um, most notably Adobe product, will recognize a one-star photo over a five-star photo, but it won't recognize a hearted photo over one that has an X on it. So either way, it doesn't matter. So we're going to go through these images and we want to call them. Now, you could do it in grid view here. What I would uh, suggest is whichever method you use is to try to maximize your workspace. So we want to get rid of these side panels. And a quick way of doing that is to hit the tab key on your keyboard. And you'll get rid of both those panels. Now, if you have a very large monitor like I do, you could probably cull them right from grid view. You could go down here to this slider and you could make the grids larger so you could see the images more readily but if you have a smaller screen that might not work for you so what I would recommend you do is you go down here to film strip view you'll have the selected image on display right here and then you'll have all the other images down here at the bottom and now you could easily go through them image by image and mark the ones you want to keep or mark the ones you want to get rid of or both you know either mark some that you're keeping some that you're getting rid of now to go through the images you would click on the first one obviously and if you want to use that flag view either the heart or the X what you would do is if you like the image you would hit the P key on your keyboard P is for pick so we're picking that one and you could see as I did that it gave it a heart and it advanced to the next image now that advance, that auto advance, by default on one will not do that. You have to enable that. And to do that, go up to Photo, Auto Advance, and make sure that's checked. If that is not checked, when I clicked and gave that a heart by hitting the P key, it would have just sat there. I would not have advanced to the next image. So I could easily go through and hit the P key to give it a heart or the X key to let's say I don't like it so I'm Xing that one out so there's a heart and there's an X now I mentioned that those aren't necessarily the best way to do it only because it's not recognized by other programs so if that's important to you if you use other programs and you want them to recognize the pick system you're using I recommend you either use the color flags or the star method now I'm gonna get rid of that heart by hitting the U key that's like unpick and I'm going to get rid of that X by again hitting that U key so you could see it got rid of both those now to use the star method just hit the number on your keyboard that corresponds to the star typically if you want to cull an image or get rid of it you would give it a lesser star rating now I imported all these at three stars you didn't have to do that you could have had them at no stars it doesn't really matter but they're all at three stars I'm going to designate that for my library, one star means I'm deleting it. Five star means I'm going to process it right away. So I'm going to hit the one key on this one because I don't like it. I don't think it's a great shot. So one key. Now this shot I think is a little better. So I'll hit the five key. And you can see that this one now has one star. That one has five stars. Now if you would prefer to use color labels, you would still use the numbers on your keyboard. Six, seven, eight nine and the zero key and if you click on this little square right there that is at the top of each image you'll get a little drop down menu and you could see that you have red is six yellow seven green is eight and so on with purple being zero so you could come in and give these a specific color label or color flag if you would prefer I think stars work fine so I'm gonna call these using the star method now if you get a lot of images that are very close to each other like these two and I want to decide which one might be focused better or which one might be a better shot I could use compare view 
So what we'll do is we'll click right here and you can see nothing really changed but now when I select two or more images by holding in my case the command key down and clicking on another image if you have a PC that's because I have a Mac if you had a PC you'd hit the control key down you could see that it shows each image side by side another thing I would recommend you do is right here where it says lock pan and zoom make sure that is checked that way you could zoom in and you'll see they'll zoom in together not only that you could drag them around and they'll be dragged around together and you could actually see which one might be better in this case focused better and I think the one on the right obviously is so I want to get rid of this one so I'm going to hit the slash key on the keyboard and I'll get rid of that one now I could go back to it now it already had one star because I already did it but I'd give it one star right and then this one has five stars now it won't auto advance when you're in compare mode so watch I'll hit five stars here and it didn't do anything on this one here I'll hit I'll hit one star it didn't do anything it will only auto advance when you're in the film strip mode or in the grid mode so in grid mode it will auto advance as well so remember if you're not auto advancing and you have auto advance set on you're probably in film strip or you're in compare mode not in film strip mode so we could go through these images very quickly and we could cull them by in my case I'm cho I chose to use stars so I'm gonna hit like five one um, five one that one's not that's kinda of blurry whatever so you could go through and you could go through these very quickly now once you have that done you might wanna let's say delete all the images that are one star so to do that go to grid view by clicking there you also again could hit the G key on your keyboard let's bring those side panels back by hitting the tab key and we're gonna go over here to filters and you can see it says greater than or equal to if I click one star it's everything that's one star or greater so actually nothing happen happened because it's showing one star two star three star and so on it's showing all the images basically so we need to change this from greater than or equal to to just equal to so just click on it and click on equals now just those one star images are showing so what we're gonna do is we're going to click on one of those images we're gonna hold the shift key down and click on the last image so they're all selected I'll hit the delete key on my keyboard and it says are you sure you want to move these five items to trash yeah so we're gonna delete those now similarly now you can see it's not showing any because we're showing equal to one star now let's just say I want to process those five star images so I'll just change this to five stars now there's my five star images and I could process them as they are now when I want when I'm done with this I could just click one star and then turn it off by so I have all the images there now another thing you might want to do is once you have them imported you have them culled these are all images let's say I'm gonna keep I may want to sort them from here like I have images of a uh, vulture here some polar bear images a lot of bald eagle images maybe I want them in individual folders below the Buffalo Zoo folder so I want all my polar bear images together let's say and all my eagle images together so very easy to do so click on one let's say we're gonna get these polar bears into their own folder click on that first one and in this case they're all in a row so I could just hold the shift key in and click on that last one so they're all selected right click on any of them I'll click on that first one and we're gonna go on to add subfolder and now you could see it came up with the default name and I don't want to call it that I want to call it polar bears and then I want to move the selected items into the subfolder you could also copy them that means that it will leave a copy where they are and send a new copy to the subfolder now I want to just move them I don't need to copy them so we're gonna click add so now we have a folder you can see with the folder icon and those just have the polar bears in it now let's do the bald eagles as well so we'll click on the first one click on the last one we'll right click we're gonna um, there we go add subfolder we're gonna click bald eagle we're gonna move the selected items into that folder 
So now we have an eagle folder and a polar bear folder. And I could go and do it for all the different animals here. I could do a zebra folder and, a, and whatever. I could just make sure that they're all moved into their respective folders. Now you could see that it has that little folder icon there, but it also has an image of one of the images that is inside that folder. And I could change that. Let's say on this eagle here, I'll double click that and open that. And there's all those eagle pictures. And I want this to represent the folder. So I would click on it and I would right click. And then I would go down to, I would go down to set folder preview right there. Now, when I back out, and by the way, up here is a little breadcrumb trail of all the folders. So I could easily go back through the folders by clicking on it. There's the Buffalo Zoo. That image is the like representative image for that folder. And I could do the same thing for the polar bear. Let's say I didn't, you know, I want, let's say that one. Go down and I could set folder preview there. Then I could use this breadcrumb trail to move back, and there that one is that. So now we have them organized a little better. We have them culled by, by using a star rating, and I showed you how to set up folders so you could have each of the individual uh, types of animals in a specific folder. And that's it for this video. I think in the next video we're going to cover metadata, and then we're going to cover how to search for images using metadata. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.